So society would love to make us feel like we're behind in our 30s if we don't have our finances together. And I'm here to tell you, you are not behind. And because you landed on this video, I'm gonna give you a treat. We're gonna go over five money moves that I'm making in my 30s that I urge you to make as well so that we can set ourselves up for financial success and retire early because I'm not trying to work till 50, 60, 70, baby. Like, I, I gotta go. So, number one, one thing that I'm doing, a money move that I'm making is I am, number one, using my high yield sa my high yield savings, my health savings account to invest. So, using a portion of my health savings account to invest. And this is something that I recently learned. Like, I wish that I knew this earlier, like in my 20s, that you can use a certain amount of what you put in your health savings account for investments. I always assumed that it was only for health related expenses and it's not. And using that account, which is a tax deferred account, benefits you because it lowers the amount of taxable income is that's reported to the IRS, which means that they can take less money from you. So I was like, huh. Number one, I could have been building wealth by investing in index funds and ETFs with my health savings account and to lower my taxable income, like, mind blown. I didn't know that. So if you have a health savings account, go ahead and see if that is something that you can qualify for and sign up ASAP because those are the two benefits offer that I'm taking advantage of. And I'm using Cashing Out, which is one of my favorite books that I've been reading. Um, I guess I should show you who it's by. Julian and Kristen Sanders. Um, they talk a lot about index funds in here. I actually had heard of it, but the way that they break it down is super simple. Um, so again, highly urge you to check out the book, but also do your research on how you can maximize your health savings account. Number two is I um, am buying rental property. So the more money that you make, the more money the IRS has to take for you. So you take from you. So you want to make sure that you're putting your money somewhere, um, either in a business or in real estate, so that you have an opportunity to take advantage of the deductions. Most of the deductions, the ones that I wouldn't say matter, but the two that anybody can take advantage of, whether you have a kid or not, married or not, are business related deductions and real estate related deductions. And if you're not putting the money that you're earning from your job somewhere, that means that the IRS or whoever your tax person is, and if it's in the US, it's the IRS, that means that they have more room to take more money from you. And if you wanna lower the amount that they're taking from you, you have to spend your money. Scare money don't make no money. I don't know who said that, but it's the truth. Because I used to be so afraid to invest in real estate. And now I'm like, where, where is my next property? <laughs> I'm eager to put my money somewhere. And then I also have a business. You know, Maximize Money, formerly known as Real Estate Prep, is my business. So I can just take advantage of deductions when it comes to advertising, managing my website, the services that I use to create these videos, like all of those things count as deductions. So I can use those deductions to lower the amount of revenue, taxable revenue, that I, well, I don't lower it, but basically like the deductions help to cancel out the taxable revenue because I'm spending the money that I'm making. I'm not just letting it sit there. So buy rental properties if you don't want to start a business, but I also encourage you to start a business as well. So you can take advantage of both. Um, number three is to uh, join, and this is what I did. I joined a community of like-minded individuals. So for me, real estate is, is my priority. I'm interested in business. I'm interested in content creation, all of that. It's been fun. Shout out to everybody. However, my bread and butter is real estate. Everything that I'm doing leads back to real estate. I work to buy real estate. <laughs> I create these videos to buy real estate. Like I started this business to, to buy real estate because that will allow me to generate passive income and retire early. But I was so stuck on like what my next step was that I knew that I needed to be around people that were steps ahead of what I was doing that I can run my strategy by, that can encourage me you know, to stay the course, to help me explore different tactics that I hadn't considered. And that's not to say that I don't hang around my family, my friends, because I definitely do. But the conversation shift when you get around people that are doing what you want to do or aspire to do what you want to do so that you guys can learn together. Like the moves that I've made in this short amount of time of this community that I'm a part of, 
it would have taken me years. Like it has taken me years. Like I should have done so much of this stuff in my 20s. And if you don't, if you haven't watched my five money moves that I wish that I would have made in my 20s video, I'm gonna put it on the screen somewhere here because baby, if I knew then what I know now, <laughs> I would, I probably would be retired, okay? From corporate America. Um, so if you have certain goals, whether they're real estate related or not, if you have a big goal, like a fitness goal, a business goal, whatever, like get around people that are doing that. Intentionally seek out that community and watch how your life changes, baby. Like, I'm just saying. And I was thinking about creating a wealth building community on like Facebook, like a private community where we could just really talk you know, personal finance, wealth building, passive income, real estate investing, retire early. If you would be interested in something like that, comment below and let me know if you would. Um, Cause I'm thinking about creating it because I'm a part of different groups and I wanna have one group that encompasses all of that. But anyway, that's a tangent, but I really would like to know because what you say um, is gonna help me determine if I wanna do that. So that was three, join a like-minded community of people that are focused on the same goals you are. Four is to not be afraid of credit cards. So I actually got my first credit card in my 20s, my late 20s, because I was so afraid. Like I had been so focused on paying off my student loans, paying off my car. I was like, uh-uh, I don't want no more debt. But thankfully one of my good friends was like, girl, like you can get one with a low balance. You know, just because they give you $5,000 doesn't mean you have to spend it. You know, use it, start with something small like a cash back card, you know, so that there, you have more money in your pocket. So if I could do it all over again, I probably would have gotten a credit card sooner, um, but I would have gotten a credit card strategically. So in my 20s, if again, if you watch that video, you heard about how much I travel with my family, with my friends, with booze. Like I was, I was, I was an international bay. I'm still an international bay, but... I can only imagine how many points I could have racked up and use those points to travel for free, which is what I'm doing with um, my travel credit card now. Please watch the video, which I'll link somewhere about how I earned a free trip to Costa Rica, child, with my points. And I was like, I would have gotten a credit card and utilized it strategically the way that I'm doing now with my travel card. Um, because that would have funded a lot of these trips. And I'm, I funded them by using my, my card for things that are everyday expenses for me, like groceries, for example. So again, go back and watch that video. It's a game changer and I will link it in the description. And then finally, number five is I would have diversified my income streams sooner. So granted, I have diversified my income streams now, baby. I got money everywhere. You know, I have high old savings accounts. Oh, only one. I have a high old savings account. I invest in real estate investment trusts, which are REITs. You know, I have a business in addition to my nine to five job. And I also invest in dividend paying stocks, you know. Um, and I have a video on that, the four, you know, um, strategies that I'm using to create passive income to retire early, also linked in the description. Um, but I wish I would have started on all this stuff sooner, y'all. Like, like, I wish I would have started doing this sooner because I would be so further ahead of the game, you know? And I'm thankful to have seen the light in my 30s, but like, if I would have known what I know now in my 20s, I, I know I said it before, but I would have been retired from corporate America because I would have been so strategic with my money. Like, I would have been so strategic with building passive income. I wouldn't have a need to work. Work would be optional, you know? So if you are 30 something, you know, these are five money moves that I encourage you to take advantage of. These are the things that I'm doing. I'm not a financial advisor. Please seek your own financial advice. This is just what I'm doing, my money moves. Number one is I'm using my health savings account for my job to invest in, in investments, you know, meaning index funds for me and exchange traded funds, which are ETFs. That's just what I do. You gotta do what's best for you. Number two is I would have bought rental properties sooner. So I wouldn't have waited, you know, to put my money somewhere because the more money that I'm just keeping in my back pocket, the more money IRS has to take from me. And if you don't put your money somewhere, whether it's a rental property or a business, the IRS is going to take it regardless, baby. So put it somewhere where you can utilize deductions. 
Three is I would have joined more like-minded communities that are focused on my goals so that I can get places faster. Like community and investing your, in yourself equals speed when you, you know, vet the communities. Every community you created equally. I can only speak to the real estate one that I'm a part of. The conversations that we're having on a day-to-day -day basis, like mind blowing don't be afraid to invest and you know welcome and intentionally seek out these like-minded communities because you will get so further much quicker four is i would have gotten credit cards sooner and utilized them strategically specifically travel cards because that's something that i already enjoy doing and i've enjoyed it from my 20s and beyond you know so i would have just been a lot more strategic and gotten a lot more free trips than what I've gotten now. And then fifth is I would have diversified my income stream. So I would have utilized my nine to five income to invest in other passive income streams such as REITs, high yield savings accounts, dividend paying stocks, and you know, a side business, you know, cause that equals deduction. So thank you so much for watching. Um, comment below and let me know which one of these strategies you plan to start on first. And please forward this to a 20-something that you know. Uh, I'm sorry, a 30-something that you know, but even a 20-something so that they can know, you know, let me get myself ahead of the game. And please like, comment, and subscribe to the videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.